I want to know what you make out of your first, your, I wouldn't say first team, your, your offense that was out there first. Uh, and when they only come away with, with three points in the four drives, how do you sort of, you know, make sense of that? And, and how much do you put on that in regards to, you know, uh, I, I don't know how to say, but uh, I'm sorry. But like, how, how much weight do you put on that, actually? How about that? You know what, there was a way we managed the game, Jordan, in terms of the tempo of that first half. We weren't tackling to the ground, so there was a large part of our running game that we weren't really trying to hammer. It kind of makes you play left-handed. We don't establish the run early on, but that's just what we decided to go with. Or we're going to have Daniel and some other guys in the game. We thought that was best for the team, what we wanted to see. You know, there were some missed opportunities early on, some drop passes. We had to do a better job in the second quarter against the pass rush. But overall, you know, I thought that they moved the ball, you know, decent as the quarter went on. We were able to get a little bit of openings right there early on with some seam with runs between the tackles. You know, we had some opportunity to move the ball with the passing game in the second uh, second quarter right there. So, look, as far as getting in sync together with these guys, it was decent overall. We've got to improve. We've got to clean up a lot of stuff. You know, definitely don't want to come away with any kind of turnovers. If you have one of those in the pocket tonight, we've got to clean that up. Hey, Joe, I'm wondering about uh, how you look at the pressure along the line of scrimmage. It looked like Lorenzo Carter comes away with three or four sacks to us, which – I'm sure it's a positive to you that he's getting that pressure. And then on the flip side of that, you got to worry about your offensive line when you see that. How do, you, how do you make sense of that? Well, look, I've been watching, you know, the progress on both sides of the entire training camp. And obviously I'm watching from dual perspective right there. Those in particular our training camp, he's made a lot of improvement. He plays with a high motor. He's developing a skill set and really kind of expand on what his game's been in the past. Brett's done a phenomenal job with him right there. And the offensive line, look, to be honest with you, it's some live competition we're going out there. There's some different tools that we can use to help these guys in games. We chose to keep this, keep this a little bit vanilla tonight, so that takes a little bit of tool set you can use through game planning away from it. Uh, but we got to see you know, more improvement in the one-on-one matchups and how they handle it across the board. One of the things I looked at early was I thought Colt McCoy and Deion Lewis uh, looked pretty good, and your thoughts on them? No, I think they both had good camps right there. I mean, Deion's a guy you get in the ball in space. He's got an ability to make plays make guys miss. You get him between the tackles. Sometimes he's hard to find. And he does a really good job of reading the blocks from and finding the hole and getting vertical on it. You know, Colt does a nice job of managing the game. But, you know, he's got a lot of savvy out there to really find the open receiver. He's got a lot of poise in the pocket to sit back there when the pass rush is coming. He's got that clock in his head from being, you know, so experienced in his career that he knows when to get that ball out. He's been productive for us along the way. You know, we're happy with his progress. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Joe, uh, do you have any update on Blake Martinez? And then, uh, you know, Evan didn't play tonight, so just curious, anything up with him? Yeah, so on, on Blake, no, there's no update based on what we talked about last night. Uh, in terms of Evan, look, honestly, we've just been pounding him so much in practice that we've really kind of backed off a little bit in load management. It wasn't just him. We made decisions going in in terms of how we're going to use all of our players. These are things we look at in terms of total reps we're taking in practice. You know, some of the GPS numbers we get from our strength staff and training staff. So it was a calculated decision tonight that we just said, hey, you know what, tonight's a night. Even if it was a regular practice, we may have backed off Evan a little bit. We made a decision tonight. There was a lot of other guys we had to evaluate. So we wanted to make sure they got maximum reps when we pulled back time a little bit for Evan. And you said no update on Blake, but you left it adjusted. So you weren't overly concerned. Is that still where you're at? Yeah, I'll check with the trainers and see where he's at right there. Thanks. Hi, right, Leonard. Hey, Joe, what did you think of the night Wayne Goldman had? And then also, looked like Saquon Barkley ran with a couple different units. What was the thinking there? Just try to get him his plays when we knew he was going to be in the first half, Pat. We just bracketed how we we're going to play the players tonight going in. You know, there was over 50 offensive snaps in the first half. We wanted to make sure that we got Saquon, you know, enough snaps early on. We weren't planning on him playing the second half. That was really, we wanted to reserve that for a lot of the younger guys. We wanted to make sure we got a good, clean evaluation on them competing. So that's all it was that right there. You know, in terms of Wayne, he's a guy that's really flashed for us the entire training camp. He's a guy that we've challenged and, you know, told him we want to see how he responds in competitive situations. Obviously, tonight he had a good night. But he's a guy that's shown a lot of potential throughout his career. He showed a lot of improvement for us, and we're happy with the night he had tonight. Thanks. You know, Slater? Joe, you alluded a little, a little bit to the pressure uh, and the one-on-ones in the offensive line, but all things considered, how do you think Daniel Jones played – and then a second unrelated one, Dexter Lawrence really seems to have been doing a really nice job batting down passes. What do you make of, of how he's performed, and in particular that, that skill set that he has? Yeah, so I'll start with Dex more. Because I think Dex had a really you – know, he's a guy that came in a really good shape, really ready to go. He's done a really good job working with Spence and working on some of the pass rush stuff, but really where he's improved this year a lot 
is his ability to build that wall and anchor on the run game and really help us get him to a third down situation. You know, he's got a good knack for getting his hand up at the right time and batting the ball down. A lot of that comes into just his instincts. But it's also he's got that good length where he can really keep extension off the offensive line and see through them to when the quarterback's in that, you know, rhythm of throwing the ball, he gets his hand up at the right time. I've been happy with how Daniel's been progressing. I thought he had a good night overnight overall tonight. Um, you know, we got to make sure that we give him some help as far as getting this out. Uh, receivers got to do a job as far as taking advantage of opportunities right there. But I thought Daniel's productive when he was in there. Obviously, there's things to clean up on. Um, this is like any other preseason game. We've got to look at this very critically as a team, be very honest with our players, and let them know where we're at and where we have to go going forward. Ralph? Joe, I know you said that um, things were a little bit vanilla in this scrimmage, obviously. It uh, looked like, though, with the pass rush, there were guys lining up in some different spots. Lorenzo Carter came from each side uh, and some other spots as well. Is he a guy, when you look at him, that can be used in many, many different ways for this defense? Yeah, I think we talk all the time about versatility, Ralph, and Zoe's definitely a guy who has a lot of position flex with his still, uh, skill set. You know, he's got that outside backer, that kind of, you know, DN range for coming off the edge. He's also a guy that if we want to could play in the stack, he's got a history of doing that as well. He's made improvement in the pass game in terms of coverage-wise, and he's shown improvement on a daily basis in the pass rush. So the night he had tonight was no surprise to us. He's a guy that, you know, we're expecting a lot out of. We're putting a lot of responsibility on Hey, Joe, did you um, specifically try to do some things tonight just to make sure you did them uh, a challenge, um, halftime interview coming off the field? I mean, were there any <laughs> details that you did to say, look, this is my shot at this, I got to do it? No, absolutely. Everything we did tonight was very intentional of making sure we checked every box for what myself, every other coach, and every player would experience as close as we can to when we play our opening night game. So everything from the interviews coming off at halftime, everything to the setup of this press conference right here of how we're doing it in the coaches club, you know, the way we conducted our pregame and halftime adjustments, the challenge, which obviously wasn't a critical play in it, wanted to make sure we took an opportunity just to get the challenge operation for the entire team. And then we made sure that we gave the opportunity to manufacture some two-minute drives at the end of the half and the end of the game. These are things we want to make sure that we experience as much as players as coaches for the communication aspect. Any technical glitches of any kind or anything like that, Joe? You know, we're going to go through it with a uh, fine-tooth comb tomorrow and make sure that we talk about everything we did operationally and what we have to clean up. Obviously, it's never perfect, and obviously it's nothing – never as sharp as you want it to be. But overall, I thought it was a good start to where we're going. Joe, uh, what were your thoughts on – we saw Daniel sort of lead the, uh, lead the breakdown of the, uh, as you guys were ending your warm-ups. Uh, you know, we're not used to seeing quarterbacks do that around here. Eli was usually – uh, sort of on the fringes of, of those events. What, is, what does that mean to, the, to this team and, and to, uh, to Daniel that he was, he was able to kind of grab the reins there? Well, look, we've had a number of guys break the team down. We have different guys break them down every day. But if you're asking about Daniel's leadership, he's definitely a guy who's taken a leadership role in this team. And that's been evident with the way he comes to work every day, the way he holds himself and the way he practices and prepares and then the way he performs when he gets in competitive situations. So in terms of him calling up, you know, I don't know if it's new to somebody else to see. For us, it's no surprise. He's in a position where he's in front of the team on a daily basis. So for us, it's just business as usual. And then can I ask you just real quick what you saw from uh, Javon Leak? Uh, he, had, he had the one big run, a nice return. Yeah, he did a good job in the return game right there. There was some space to hit it. He didn't waste the opportunity. Had a, did a good job tonight in the, uh, in the run game. You know, took advantage of some opportunities. So we'll watch the tape and we'll kind of evaluate all the players, you know, as we go.